So I recently found a video, this one over here, highest grossing gadget games comparison 3D for December 2021. And obviously before we get into this content, massive shout out to Ranky Games. This is his first video. And I do believe that he is going to keep doing this for every month. So if you guys haven't done so, go ahead and subscribe to him to show your support. But regardless, essentially, this is a really, really great visualization in terms of like comparisons between games and how they performed in terms of revenue for the month of December. And so having tried so many gadgets myself, I did want to actually like give a couple of guesses, throw in some estimates in like where I think particular games are going to be. So for example, and you guys already see some like Genshin Impact videos over here, but Genshin Impact I think is going to be undisputed number one. Otherwise, we've got the likes of FGO up the top. I think Dokken Battle is going to be up there very, very high. And then for example, down below, we've got probably like Illusion Connect, Storica, Dragalia Lost probably at like 600k ish. I think Guardian Tales is going to be on the lower end and keep in mind that this is actually a worldwide revenue. So with that in mind, I do think uh, Uma Musume is going to be at the top. We've got Precon probably closer to the top than the bottom. Blue Archive PGR probably closer to the top. But with that being said, that's kind of my guesstimations for the ones that like I'm really in tune with. And so let's see how all of these gadgets went in December 2021. Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lace and today we're we're going to be watching through this highest grossing games channel as I just explained. I'm not going to say much more, let's get the show on the road. So we are going to begin with, let's have a look at what they believe the lowest grossing one is. So that's Arcana Tactics, unfortunately, I'm, wait a second, that released last year, I didn't even hear about this one. Okay, Global, 80k. And then after that, we are going to see Manasis Refrain. I definitely have heard of that, though I don't think it's actually in Global. Girl Cafe Gun is doing not so well. Really Kuma Farm, don't know much about that one. And Gate of Nightmares, that looks so much like Fairy Tale. Dragon Champions, haven't heard of that one, but apparently it's a global release. D Lith, 140k. You know, 140k. What the frick? Angry Birds Evolution? Wait, there's a gacha? Oh, there's Storica, unfortunately, not doing too hot. Brave Frontier Rexona. Wait, Brave Frontier is only doing that much? I thought they'd be doing really well. Goddess of Genesis, haven't heard of that one. Shining Beyond is, okay, I'm surprised Shining Beyond is still around, which is cool. Hurricane Terror, okay, that one was pretty, pretty popular. Game of Dice, hmm. There's a lot of IP ones down here, isn't there? Fallout Shelter Online, not too bad. Show by Rock Fez A Live. Sounds like a JP only game. We've got Date Alive. Date Alive is such a strong IP. I'm surprised it's not doing better. Agonovus from Bang Dream. Okay. Crash Fever. Wow, wait, that was from 2015. That's not bad at all. And then over here we've got Honeyworks. Just JP doing 260k, man. Sometimes it's it's pretty good. Bleach doing 270k. Kamihime Project A. And then next we have Monster Super League. Wow, that's going on five years. That's actually really freaking good. Let me go back a little bit. So this one is global only. It's been going on for five years and it's still turning 300k revenue. That's, well, that's a cash cow if I've seen one. Okay, that's pretty, that's pretty impressive to be honest. Grand Chase, I know this was very, very popular a few years ago. Uh, Kane Sasuse. Okay, I'm not gonna even try. That's doing pretty. Oh, there's Illusion Connect. 340k across three regions. JP C N E N. That's. I don't think that's too hot, to be honest. Yeah, that doesn't seem too hot. We got Digimon over here. Another IP one. Action Timeomnin. That is. I, I hear a lot about that one. Okay, that's one I've never heard of, Summoner's Greed. But you know what's funny about this one? It actually uses that dragon meme. Like the meme where it's like a three-headed dragon and then one of them is a derp and two of them are kind of serious. Or maybe that game is where it actually all came from. <laughs> I don't know. Star Trek Timelines, just a global release, five years, 400k. That's actually really freaking good. And then we have this One Punch Man one for 400k, only released for about a year or two. Exos Heroes, 400k, not overly surprising. We're actually getting into like quite good territory. Traha over there. Swordmaster Story, that one's pretty, it's okay. We got Summoner's War. Wait, Summoner's War down here? Lost Centuria. I feel like this is an Okay, it's a new Summoner's War because April 2021, I know Summoner's War was released when I was in freaking high school or something. And so that Summoner's War, I'm expecting it to be like really, really far back, like pulling big revenues. But okay, so it looks like the Lost Centuria is down there. 
Crush them all, never heard of that. Looks Western. We've got Bleach Immortal Soul, 500k released only about a year ago, less than a year ago. Ensemble Stars, wait, that was a 2015 game. Holy crap, some of these, some of these JP games are operating like crazy. Oh, Destiny Child down here. That is, uh, that is a shame to see, to be honest. However, it is going on for about five years, and so that is quite good. 500k across three regions. Yeah, it seems okay. Then we got Iron Saga at 510k, a Disney Heroes Battle. Three years ago, reaping in 500k. That's pretty freaking good. Heroes Charge, 600k. Oh my god. Oh, jeez. Brave 9? I don't know if this is Brave 9. That kind of looks like Brave Frontier to me. But like, let me scroll back one over here. Heroes Charge. This looks like a Western game. 600k global release only, released seven years ago. This just really goes to show like the power of some of these Western gachas. <laughs> Or even other Western games, such as like, oh, there's Dragalia. So Dragalia's got a global release. And on just the global release with region lock, they are doing 600k. Honestly, I'm happy to see my boy doing so well. Haven't heard of that one. Haven't heard of that one, but that looks like a global cash grab. And it is successfully grabbing. It's freaking like seven years in. This one, what the frick? 2014 Crusader's Quest, 700k from just an EN server. That's pretty impressive, and <laughs> looking at the pixel art, it's looking kind of cute. Maybe I'll try it out. I don't know. We'll see. Final Gear made it to 730k. Oh, but that's four regions. That's a, that's a lot. Review Starlight, no surprise there. It's doing pretty well. And GFL, also doing pretty well. Actually, that's a doing that's doing not as well as I expected it to be. I would have thought that GFL would be like not as great as Azura Lane, but at least something similar to it. And I'm predicting Azura Lane to be in the millions. So this was a surprising one for me to see, GFL. Soul Land, Advent of the Gods. Haven't seen that one, but it looks like a CN game. A love live one i'm surprised that the love live ones don't do that well like this is like 800ks but i know games that do definitely like 5 million 6 million and then 8 million 14 million stuff like that all right so let's continue girls x battle to 800k for just a global release that's pretty good d4 dj oh it maybe this guy over there that's actually quite good Reincarnation, oh, near. Now, near Reincarnation, it was both hyped and unhyped because of like the whole walking simulator, but that's, I think it's okay revenue. If I was a business executive there, I'd be like, yeah, you know what? Let's keep it going. Ark of War, have not heard of that one. Revived Witch at 930K for three regions. Now, I don't know how I feel about that one. Like it is a new IP, but that is not actually that great. Because if we compare it to like, for example, Blue Archive, which we haven't seen yet, I'm pretty sure Blue Archive did like four mil in its first month or something, maybe even six mil. And this is Revived Witch with three regions combined, C, N, K, R, and E, N. So unfortunately it's not doing too hot, but like it looks like like it's doing okay. All right, so moving on, A3, haven't heard of this one, unfortunately. Moonlight Sculptor, 980K for a two year release, not bad. Toho Lost World is still going strong. Wow, that's one mil in, that's only been like seven months. But then again, we haven't seen Alchemy Stars yet, and so that's probably gonna be pretty lit. King's Raid at one mil for global. Wait, that's actually really freaking good. One mil global release in just December, September 2016. That's a five year old game. Wow, some of these games have like real freaking longevity. Grand Summoners, haven't heard of that. Actually, no, I have heard of that one. Memoria Freeze, that is going quite strong, although that is for regions. A Gundam game, okay, pretty cool, pretty cool. The Alchemist Code, but it has uh, Old Mate. Maybe it was a collab and that's what helped really boost that revenue. However, let's move on. Unison League, okay. Unison League is quite popular. I definitely hear about it from time to time. Lord of Heroes as well. 1.1 mil from just one server. That's really good. Age of Magic. All right, here we go. The Western games. Mega Man X Dive. Mmm. P-A-D. All right, let's have a look at this one. All right, my dudes, for you guys who are not very like well-versed or uh, like started gachas quite recently, Puzzles and Dragons, as you can see, was released a very long time ago, Jan 2012. It definitely is with the likes of like Brave Frontier, with like Rage of Bahamut, all of these really old school gacha games. I don't know if I would call it first wave, but like for it to still be doing 1.1 mil, like freaking almost 10 years later, that's insane. All right, so here we have Countersides. That's JPKRCN and 
EN. Although the EN is not global, it's actually C. However, Counterside, I do know, has been having its own little controversies because of like some new rearm system. And so I'm kind of surprised that it is doing this well, but like I'm also kind of not surprised that it's not doing as well as it could be. All right, moving on, we got on Myoji, only two servers at 1.3 mil. I know it's quite popular in China. Looney Tunes, World of Mayhem. Oh my God, these, these Western games. FFRK is doing pretty well, 1.3 mil. King of Fighters. Oh, it looks like we're gonna transition to something bigger. Okay, here we go, Love Live. That's that's what I thought would be there. Dissidia, okay, yup. Love Nikki, okay, that is a surprising one. I didn't think it was gonna do that well. Connor Super Fantastic Days, 1.68 mil. Glad to see that it's doing quite well. Then we have Last Claudia. Wow, that's actually quite impressive. Cookie Run, wait, this is Cookie Run Oven Break. So this isn't even like the Cookie Run Kingdom that we know. Cookie Run Kingdom just had like a massive resurgence after that Sonic collab. And so I reckon Cookie Run Kingdom is gonna be like really, really high. All right, moving on, we've got, is this DQ Die? DQ Die at 1.79. That's actually quite strong considering like the kind of game it was. Ulala, haven't heard of that. Ragnador, unfortunately haven't heard of that one. Salt Lily, I've definitely, wow, one region, 1.8 mil after one year. World Flipper doing 2 mil, not too bad, but that's three regions. FFBE still going strong after six years, holy crap. Shining Nikki, 2 mil. Bleach Brave Souls, global five year old game, 2 mil, oh my god. Some of these games, like, you just, you're just like, what the frick? My Hero Academy, a strongest hero at two mil. That's, that's freaking insane. Honestly, a lot of these games, like, oh, okay. This is not one that I thought I'd be seeing here. Sinnoh Alice pulling 2.2 mil across three regions for being a four-year-old game. Okay. That is actually really surprisingly strong. Like, I don't know how the global Sinnoh Alice is still doing right now, but there was a max exodus at the start of the game. I think it just got overhyped and then it's like constantly bleeding players because of the Colosseum. And don't get me wrong, I think the game is quite fun. It's just that like for a lot of people, the daily commitment was quite, uh, it was a bit too much. And then we have Slam Dunk over here. We got, it's just the power of IP. Langrissa, that is not a surprise, 2.4 mil. Remember this is monthly, Evertail, 2.7 mil. Jeez, Artery Gear Fusion, almost 3 mil in just JP. And then we have this Marvel Future Fight at 2.9 mil. Tower of Saviors, jeez, one server operating for about eight years and they're pulling three mil? What the frick? Some of these games are insane. Oh, I remember this one being released. This one was honestly hyped to the moon. Oh my God, Marvel really be pulling in like the, the big cash. One Piece, Precon, here's Precon. Precon at three mil for five servers combined. You know, for five servers, that's actually relatively weak. I think it's probably strongest in like JP and CN and probably not overly strong for like KR, TH and EN. I know EN, I believe contributed maybe like 500, 600K last month. So that is quite good. But I do know that the majority of the strength of the IP does lie in JP. All right, we got Bang Dream, we got Mahjong Soul. Wait, Mahjong Soul is doing that well? So for you guys who don't know what Mahjong Soul is, it is another Yostar game. And it is exactly what it sounds like. It is a gacha centered around Mahjong. So we got Captain Subasa. Oh my gosh, like sometimes like I look at Captain Subasa, I look at the graphics, I'm like, hmm. This is like really 1990s, 1980s manga style. I'm personally not a massive fan, but clearly the IP is strong enough only across two regions to keep it going at 3.5 mil for December. Hearthstone at 4 mil, okay, that's um, that's quite good. Another Eden, no surprise. PGR at 4.4 mil, that's across four regions. I'm not surprised, like PGR, everyone who's like, oh, PGR is gonna die. It, like this obviously shows otherwise. There are so many other games, all the other games that came before it, they could be killed before PGR is looking to get killed. And I know a lot of people want PGR to fail because of the early game controversy, but it's just not going to, you know? Mobile Legends Adventures 4.6 mil, Pokemon Masters EX 5 mil in one month. Oh my God. Idol Heroes as well. Some of these IPs are way too strong, man. Got Honkai at 5.1 mil, which is, that's actually surprisingly like close to PGR. I would have thought Honkai's IP would carry them a little bit further than PGR, but maybe that's just how it is. 
World Divisions FFBE. I was actually very, very interested in that game once upon a time. But now we have Figure Fantasy at 5.8 million. Okay. That is actually pretty insane. That's that's a pretty big number, even if it has four servers. Okay, that's even more insane. Yu-Gi-Oh! 3 years, EN, 6 mil, GBF. Okay, there is no surprise for GBF. Okay, what the frick? I did not expect Blue Archive to be pulling $6.8 million USD from just two servers. And this is just in the month of December. Like, holy moly, what the frick? I'm glad for its success. Uh, wait, wasn't there a KR server as well? Uh, whatever, but like Blue Archive is really, oh, here we go. Here we go, Alchemy Stars at 6.8 million. That is honestly really impressive. I'm very happy for it. I think Blue Archive, I think Alchemy Stars, they are both fantastic games, both original IP, and I'm, I'm so happy to see them do well. We've got AFK Arena at 7 mil. Holy crap, isn't this like an old game? April 2019, that is actually only like three years old. It's not that old. One Piece, of course, Bounty Rush, Azura Lane. Okay, this is what I was saying about GFL versus Azura Lane. I really thought that GFL and Azura Lane, like a lot of the recommendations just by like going through the Gacha communities, it's always like, oh, if you want something easy, something casual, something kind of free to play friendly, then you're gonna be looking at either Azura Lane or GFL or like Precon or some of the other free to play friendly games. But for a free to play friendly game, Azura Lane is pulling 7.4 mil, whereas GFL can't even pull one mil. Like that is, that is an insane, insane difference. Uh, somebody has got to tell me why. I don't know. I don't know, but somebody does have to tell me why. All right, we've got Arknights coming here at 7.6 mil. Absolutely no surprise there, but I am surprised about this one. Fire Emblem Heroes. Like, I know the IP is really, really strong, but there is a lot of Doom posting about this game, and so that just really goes to show that you can't, like, trust public sentiment. Because although I knew the IP was strong, I did not think it was 8 mil in December strong. I don't know, maybe they got a new character release, something like that. Disney Twisted Wonderland. Oh wow, okay, I remember that one coming out. I've never seen this one before. It looks a bit creepy. We've got Epic 7 over here at 9... What the frick? Guardian Tales at 9.6 million? Wow, okay. Okay, a lot of its success may be attributed to the fact that the JP server recently opened, but Guardian Tales, oh my god, okay, well, Guardian Tales is probably like one of my favorite games that I won't play. So whilst I am really happy to see it doing so well at 9.6 mil in just December, I'm also quite surprised, like what the frick, where the heck did this come from? Do they have like a, another broken unit or something? Or maybe my opinion that I thought was unpopular, which was that GT is a great game, it turns out to be quite popular. All right, so yeah, back to it, Guardian Tales, was a massive surprise to be honest and Epic 7 no surprise at all. Epic 7 is another game that I think has a fantastic original IP and the devs are doing quite well. They weren't always doing well but they're doing quite well. We've got Battle Cats over here at 9.8 mil. Okay this is not a surprise at all. 7 Deadly Sins Grand Cross at 10 million dollars. Like if you guys can imagine, like, come back to Illusion Connect, which was at, like, 400k. Some of these IPs, man, it's freaking insane. We got Dragon Quest tacked at 10 mil. We got Star, Star Wars? Star Wars at 12 mil? Wait, it's a six-year-old game, almost seven-year-old. Wait, that's so weird. Nino Kuni, I know that's very popular. Ensemble Stars Music, okay. Didn't know about that one. Romancing Saga, that is quite good. That is also a game that I did not expect to see up here or like with all of these other ones. Like wow, con congratulations to the guys who did Romancing Saga. Uh, Marvel Strike Force, which was released before that latest Marvel game. That's really interesting. Project Sekai Colorful Stage, I think that's the Miku game pulling 16.7 million. And this bad boy was only released like, what, maybe a year and a half ago in JP? What the frick? And so after that, we have Summoner's War, which is kind of no surprise, although it is kind of surprising. I don't get it. I don't really get the appeal of Summoner's War. Like, it's actually one of those really first gen gacha games that are really old school and stuff. But I was watching another gacha YouTuber the other day, like Sean B. And and he was playing like real-time arena and so that competitive aspect actually kind of looked fun. Probably a massive reason as to why Epic 7 is also up there with the charts. And oh wow, okay, 
Well, I did not expect this one. Tower of Fantasy at 18 million from just CN. That is honestly really fantastic to see. I thought Tower of Fantasy was a really good game, but I am still very sad that they are not releasing to global. That's uh, that's uh, it's, it's very sad news. All right, Cookie Run Kingdom doing 18 million. Jeez, that was a game that I did not think would pop off like crazy. Dragon Ball Legends, unfortunately not familiar. I only really know Dock and Battle. Another Marvel game. Dude, how much is Marvel making from all this? We've got Raid Shadow Legends here at 24 million. And so when we're in the realm of Raid Shadow Legends, you can kind of expect like all of the massive global games to be here. I'm talking like Bejeweled or something or Candy Crush, but I don't think they're gacha games. So they're probably not gonna be included here. So let's have a look. Empires and Puzzles RPG Quest. Never heard of it, but it's probably like in that realm that I just talked about. There is Dokkan Battle at 28 million. W what the frick is that? I've never heard. Of Actually, no, I have heard of that Monster Strike. There is FGO at 49 million, who is coming in at third. Uma Musume at second with 55 mil and Genshin Impact at 66 million. Let me... This scale is insane. Like, if you guys can remember the visualizations, like, look at that. That's 66 million. Let me bring you back to the start where we were just looking at like small one Amazon package kind of thing. And then we're going up to looking at like freaking Jeff Bezos's bank. Like look at that stack. But you know what is actually more surprising? Like this guy over here, the fact that Uma Musume, pretty derby from just one server itself, JP, it alone can almost compete with Genshin Impact for the month of December in just one month. Like the JP guys must really love their horse racing or their horse racing girls. I don't know, but that is that is actually insane considering Genshin is actually on a global release. And what is even more surprising is third place, this bad boy down here. Let me just move back a little bit. We've got Mother F and FGO at 49 mil from a six year old game. Like my guys, FGO players, I don't know if you guys are masochists or whatever, but like you guys clearly love this game so much despite all of the complaining that I see about it. But yeah, the fact that FGO, Uma Musume and like these two games and the fact that they can come close to Genshin Impact is honestly insane. It blows my mind. All right. And so with that, that covers off December 2021 revenues for all of these highest grossing gacha games. I think the data started from 100k. So as you can see, okay, well about 80k. So there probably are a lot more other gacha games that aren't doing so well. And so to be honest, if your gacha game did appear here somewhere, I reckon it's probably doing fine. Like for God's sake, some of these 80k games, some of these 100k games, games, they're still running and, and they must be still running for a reason, right? Like, look at this really cool farm since two years ago at 110 K. That's probably an indication of a gacha doing good. Satisfactory, right? Like it's enough to keep it running. And so my guys, with all of that, that brings us to the end of the video. And so let's move on to our secret question. I really, really want to ask you guys, like did this video match up with your expectations? Because a lot of it is actually insane. So a couple of the ones at the end really, really surprised me. Like Epic 7, no surprise there, but Guardian Tales, like 9.6 mil. Like I, I love Guardian Tales, but I did not think that like so many other people loved this game that much. And so yeah, let me know how you guys feel about these revenue charts. Did it kind of align with your expectations or were you surprised by some? And let me know which ones you were surprised by. And if you guys would be so kind as to dropping your thoughts down in the comments below, I would really appreciate it because it means you've made it up until the end of the video. And so thank you guys so much. But otherwise, if you did like this video, please give it a like. And if you would like to see more, please subscribe. But otherwise, as some of the top executives of all of these gadget companies once said, Said, all good things must come to an end and so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video bye bye